Hi there, and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on how to carry out the log rank test in Stata. Now, the log rank test is something that gets carried out in survival analysis, and I think the simplest way to explain it is really to create a data set and just carry out the procedure and talk you through it and tell you what it achieves. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to go ahead and paste in a whole bunch of code right now that I created earlier for another survival analysis task purpose and I'm just highlighting uh, highlighting it here for you. It's, it's a lot of code. Uh, you can grab it if you like off 272analytics.com on the Kaplan Meyer estimator tutorial page or you could maybe just pause your window here and uh, copy down the code if you want to replicate what I'm doing. Um, if not you can just ignore it because I'm just generating a data set that we can use to do the log rank test on and if you already have your own data set then you needn't really bother with you know learning how to replicate what I'm doing here to create this artificial data set. So let me go ahead and do all of this for you and what I want to do is just show you what I've created and kind of talk you through it a little bit. So I have a fail time variable here, I have a fail variable and I have a treatment variable. Let's say that we have a data set here of 100 people that we're tracking and these people are let's say they were diagnosed with cancer some amount of time ago and what we're trying to measure is the uh, number of months until they have a recurrence of their cancer right and what we might be doing is measuring two treatments here one and two I haven't really specified what they are but you know you can imagine that maybe one is some kind of chemotherapy and two is some other other kind of treatment that we could give and what we want to understand is the relative effectiveness of these two treatments and so log rank is one way to sort of get at that so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to actually paste in the code and have you look at it and then talk you through what it means so there's a couple of things here that I want to call attention to for the log rank test you always start with STS test now that is assuming that you already ST set your data and I did that earlier in my code here. Uh, I, when you use ST set um, you follow ST set with whatever your fail time variable is called which I just called my fail time to make it easy that's the variable representing the amount of time that elapses until uh, you know the hazard takes place or the event of interest takes place and then the fail command and this variable here in parentheses is just the number of people you know who 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 experience that event at a certain fail time and if we go back and actually look we can kind of see that for example let's say 30 months in uh, four people were observed to have a recurrence of cancer now just a quick thing to point out I created this data set it doesn't have censoring um, the assumption is that all 100 of these people did have a recurrence uh, of their cancer because note that there's a fail time month for everyone. If we had censoring, it would be the case that by the time the observation period ended, um, that you know we hadn't had the chance to observe the recurrence of cancer in some folks, because just the steady time had elapsed. Now, static can handle censoring, and you know that's a whole other issue. You can do left censoring, right censoring, and there's about a thousand different variations that you can get into. But my goal here is just to show you the very basics of the log rank test, and then what I would strongly suggest is that you check the Stata documentation to learn more about how you can apply some of the additional um, alternatives options like uh, like censoring um, to this procedure. So let's go back now and let me do that code again for you here. STS test and then treatment it's it's an easily named variable I'm just calling mine treatment it's it's whatever um, the thing is whose effect you're trying to measure right so treatment in this case is a pretty intuitive thing we are trying to understand the effect of two kinds of treatment and then comma log rank so when you do that notice that we have 44 uh, events uh, failure events for treatment one and 56 events for treatment two. Now what the log rank uh, test does here for you it also it, it's, it's really quite handy at this it shows you the events observed and the events expected 
And when you can compare these, of course, you can get a chi-squared a statistic for that and a probability. Now, if your probability is over 0.05, um, pretty much obs events observed and events expected here, uh, you know, if you look at it, are uh, aligned with each other. And another way of understanding that is that if this figure is over 0.05, then neither treatment is, let's say, more effective, right? And let's give you kind of a visual look at that with the Kaplan-Meier estimator. I, I've gone ahead and put in my code for STS graph, and I, I had this um, I had this code in here earlier because I really wanted to create a lot of ticks and labels down there to show you. But you could you could actually ignore all of this if you wanted, um, and you could just in fact I can do that for you. We can just say STS graph, uh, comma by treatment, CI for confidence interval, and then we'll pull up the graph again, and so we have a treatment one and treatment two, and you know of course this is a with the Kaplan Meier estimator it's it's very intuitive. Um, everyone right at the beginning is is a survivor because you're starting with a set of people whom you're measuring over time right to see if they experience the failure event uh, whether it's death or it's it's something else and then over time people um, kind of succumb to whatever that that hazard is that failure event is and then as time goes on um, over a long enough time frame everyone will get down here to zero and what we are doing with this particular graph is we're just comparing treatments one and two and if you see them here you notice that they're pretty much right on top of each other um, even the point estimates, but I went ahead and put in CI at the end so that we could look at the confidence interval and just be even more assured that they're just huge um, overlaps in the confidence intervals. And so basically what that tells us once again in real world terms is that treatment one and treatment two are equally effective. And so you can think of the log rank test as you know, kind of a statistical measure of that. Uh, imagine if you did the Kaplan-Meier estimator um, graphic there, if you graph that function, you know, obviously it tells you intuitively, you can look right at it and say, well, it looks like treatment one, one and two are equal to each other, but you also need to quantify that statistically. And that's where the log rank test comes in handy. I hope this tutorial was helpful to you, and I would like to invite you to visit 272analytics.com for access to all our free statistics tutorials in Stata, SPSS, R, eViews, and Minitab. Here at 272analytics.com we provide data consulting primarily to graduate students. Therefore we work very closely with you in order to perfect your chapter 3 and chapter 4. That means helping you design surveys, uh, getting your data input, assisting you with fashioning appropriate research questions and hypotheses, uh, getting your data, extracting them, transforming them, cleaning them, uh, putting them through analysis, uh, interpreting them, explaining them to you so that at the end of the day you know exactly what story your data tell, why they matter, what they mean in a manner that lets you write a, a perfect chapter 4 uh, following a perfect chapter 3 and lets you defend your dissertation or thesis with complete confidence. We provide ethical consulting. It's not a writing service, so you will be responsible for taking our blueprint, our assistance, our consulting, and transforming them into an appropriate academic project for yourself. I'd also like to remind you that we provide the same services to undergraduate students who are working with quantitatively oriented assignments. Thank you so much for listening, and have a great day.